I don't think there's anything I would have said now that I haven't said already. I've always said she's a one in a million wife. And I realize it better now. Hello. Hello. Mark dear. When you realize somebody's going to be gone, that's when you really appreciate what you've had. I think that's it. She noticed that she had a lump in her breast and the GP said it didn't look good. She went for more tests and they found out it was breast cancer. And about three weeks after that, she found out it had gone to the brain. And um, yeah, that, that changed everything. Lydia has been on morphine for at least six weeks now. Is that easy? How difficult is that? She's got her struggle, which I can't imagine what it's like, even though I'm next to her. But each of us, each of us are fighting a different battle with different enemies. I didn't choose to be in this club. I was conscripted into this, this brain cancer club. But being in this club, I've been forced to look at some things and to learn some things. Viktor Frankl said something like he could see better because he was standing on the shoulders of giants. I'd like to say that I can see better because other people have picked me up upon their shoulders. Shown me things that they've learnt going through a similar process. There's nothing that's, that's been more valuable to me. That's it. That's been the, that's been the most valuable to me. As somebody gets weaker and loses cognitive ability, what their essence is gets concentrated. I used to go to funerals and listen to the eulogies and think, how could they say those things? It doesn't sound like the same person even. But now I realize why people would say that at the funeral. Because we want to hang on to a bit of the essence of that person. All the rest is gone. And everybody has said to me, that's the most difficult part, is when they start losing their character, their essence. I'm scared of that. If any of us die, our essence, I think, is strongest in those closest to us. Some of her essence will remain in those that are closest to her. And that's, that's one of the things I really hold on to. I made her a coffin about six or seven weeks ago. Bizarre, but it was nice making a coffin for my wife. <laughs> I think I've put a bit of my essence into the coffin. <laughs> a simple, 
Koffen. Ja. What's difficult is to to let go, to release Lydia. I want to make this last journey of hers, this last climb of hers, as easy as possible. At the same time, I want to try and you know, give her space to release us as well. That's the other side of it. Lydia needs to feel that we are okay. We will be able to cope without her. Then it will be easier for her to release us. And to me, that was valuable, valuable. When it happens, it's a shock, apparently. You can try and prepare yourself for it, but because we are human and we've got a heart, when it happens, it's still difficult. We don't know how we're going to handle it. Death is too big to get our heads around, but life is also too big to get our head around. I'd rather try and focus on life. To be grateful for the 23 years that we've shared, rather than regretful for the extra 20 years we didn't have. Don't look forward in fear. Don't look back in regret, but look around you in awareness. And that's more or less it, I think. Yeah. I'd say that's the, the most important thing, yeah, I would. Life. Life. Thanks to all of you who helped make this film possible. All of our films are totally crowdfunded. So if you'd like to continue to support us on our journey, check out our Green Renaissance page on Patreon. <laughs>